So my next guest gets out of Oswald Maximum Security Prison on HBO and then hangs with Dexter for every single episode on Showtime and now plays a mob boss in Gotham airing on Fox at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So David Zayas, it's good to also see you and Annie to lighten things up a little bit. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, <laughs> see you, man. Yeah, you know, I was so happy to get Annie. I was like, so I was celebrating. I was having dinner and then I yeah. realized I can't sing and dance. What happened? And, and I was like, what, what? And then I read the script again. I go, oh, thank God. I don't have to like sing and dance so much. But it was, it's great. It's the first thing that my, I have a five-year-old grandson yeah. that he doesn't have to wait 18 years to you see. You have a five-year-old grandson? Yeah, yeah. We start early in the Bronx. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> wow. And so you're in Annie with uh, the guest host of this program from just a couple of days ago, Bobby Cannavale. Bobby Cannavale, the new song and dance man of Hollywood. Yeah. That's what we're calling him now. I know. So. Now he's back in New York. <laughs> he's back in New York. <laughs> he's back in New York. He was fantastic, though. It was great. Yeah, I've known man. Bobby for a long time. It was great to be in a... Yeah, in a, and he's a big Jet fan, yeah. too. Oh. So we the were, two of you guys have... You commiserate? You uh, do some commiserating? We, I, you know, I went to the Monday Night Football uh, the other... Um, against Miami. Against Miami, and, yeah. uh, and I ran into Bobby, and we just looked at each other. We went, uh, you know... Well, ran, what are you gonna do? ran into was the operative word of that <laughs> night, since the, they, they threw it about three times I know, in that was... game against the Miami Dolphins. So let's say you're, I'm making you Woody Johnson. What do you do? What you do know... you do? Because part of me thinks this. There's, is there a part of Woody Johnson that dumps Isaac and keeps Rex and tells him, let's choose a general manager that you feel you can work with, and I... they saddle up? Yeah, I listen, I don't, I don't want to get rid of Rex. I, th I think Rex is a good coach. He, he got us a, a game from the Super Bowl his first two seasons, you know. And um, there's a, definitely a chemistry problem there that needs to be addressed. And I think is it, it might be exactly what you said. Because you take a I mean, Rex said after the game, which is somewhat, it, 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 it was a little bit sad to hear it because I, I missed the Rex bravado of the first couple of years when they were winning, pe in the ground and impounding and, and, and hitting people in the mouth. Yeah. And that's exactly what the franchise needed was a guy with the bravado out right, there, right? right? right. Him saying after the game as they dropped to 3-12, and 12, you know, Brady wouldn't say it, but he, we give him the toughest time. He says after losing to Brady for, I believe, a ninth time or, oh. an, eight, or an eighth time in the, in the 12 meetings regular season that they've had. And... The thing is, it's true. You take a look at his his passer rating on the road in his career. It's, it hovers in the mid 70s. Against the Jets on the road, it's in the 50s. So, isn't that what you need to go and 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 have as your coach? Dan? Yes, I mean, you know, what got what gets me is that it just went bad so fast. You know, they were they were really good those first two years, and then all of a sudden, it just something did not click, and it just went downhill so fast. And it's not good enough that there's just close enough when they play the Patriots, right. that they give them a good game. They got to win the game. Yes, they do. And, and it's just, you know, and I don't know what the formula, I don't know if it's Rex, but I mean, I like Rex. I'm a nostalgic Jet fan from the Richard Todd, Jerome Barkham days. That's me you know? too, man. And so uh, I'm, I I'm, love I'm a, Richard Todd. Uh, and I was explaining to these two coconuts, as John C. McGinley <laughs> called them uh, in their mid thirties. <laughs> Uh, that AJ Dewey was a four-letter. Dewey was a four-letter word in my household after the AFC Championship game in I think '81. In '81, and they're yeah. like, they, they had no idea who AJ. All Dewey those was. games. I remember Richard Todd. A couple of games, he threw like 65 times, for like you know he completed like 45 of them. He I still so, have you know. I still have an '85 Wesley Walker jersey. Wow. With my name Richard Eisen stitched in the back, so when that came that when when the laundry came back in my bunk. At Camp Loconda and Trails End <laughs> Camp, they knew whose it was. You know, I oh, still man. have that. It doesn't fit anymore. I don't think it would be very um, flattering. Remember, I seen uh, Al Toon, how tall he was, how how great a yeah. receiver he used to be. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and the thing like we're talking about Odell Beckham, you know, it's like. Man, why I would suggest the could find a player. They like didn't draft that. any wide receiver. It's, like, it's the it year of the wide receiver. They drafted one, sense. I believe yeah. it was Ace Sanders, and he's he he didn't do anything. Yeah. It just it's it's really they <sighs> need to find a better like chemistry to get draft picks and you know, and I don't know if Rex has if that's his voice. That, now that's it. Know? I'm here with David Zayas. Go see Annie in theaters now. Uh, uh, Gotham airing Mondays on Fox at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's the issue too, is that is Rex can handle the defensive side of the mm. ball. But there are times when he's too focused on the defense. They can't, they clearly cannot develop a quarterback. No. Clearly they can't. The question is, is how can they keep this defensive mind, this guru? He's awesome at it. 
How do you keep that? Do you think, like, the quarterback has got to be the most psychological position in football? There's no doubt. You know what I'm or saying? Or maybe sports, too, and by and the Even way. in sports. Like, with a and starting pitcher, or I don't know where you could... What else you could come up with in that Just, regard? It's all, it's all in the psyche for a quarterback. And, and that year when they brought in Tim Tebow and they started oh, in, yeah, in the yeah, media, yeah. they started going again. I think that just killed Mark Sanchez's, you know, uh, psyche. And it just, it, it, it t that's when it started going downhill. Right. Me, well, you know? I, I think also running up into the, uh, the, the, the behind of his right guard in front of an entire that, nation <laughs> might actually fray on somebody's that, uh, confidence. That's probably um, true also. It was definitely a cumulative effect of everything yeah. that you're talking about. Um, and then, you know, when uh, the salary cap, uh, 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 I guess, risk reward that Mike Tannenbaum was dealing with, finally they had to pay the bills. Yeah. And suddenly there was too many guys that were making too much money and they were older and it just went downhill. The ground and pound went away. So would, would you clean house? All of it. I, I think I would clean house. You have All to. I mean, here's the good news. It's, it's got to get better. It really can't get much worse. It's got to get. It's got to get. Oh, better. it can get worse. You think so? Well, Rich Kotite brings oh, to mind. Oh God! You know that's what Kanavali said. He called the Jets. Oh, he, I, I told him one year that the I Jets take were going to be bad. I my glasses for that one. I, I told him the Jets are going to be bad, and and, and Kanavali goes, "You mean Kotite bad? <laughs> Not bad. Kotite bad." And that's the name of my oh. fantasy team is Kotite bad, based off of all of that. I don't know. Oh. I've gone back and forth between. Uh, that, that Rex is so good, there's got to be something salvageable there in some way, shape, or form if there's somebody above him that believes in him and gives him all the groceries that he needs to win. I that think, I believe yeah. that, that that's some way to make it work if you can get somebody offensive-minded enough with, uh, with the security given to Rex. You can't just keep doing this one-year, one-year, one-year yeah. thing because nobody's going to come in and raise their hand and say, I would love to be you know, part of your staff. Yeah. And the other thing, as I've said, is hire the, 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 the little old lady from uh, Poltergeist and have her go to Shea Stadium, wherever it is, I'm in a parking lot, mm -hmm. uh, then out to Hofstra, and then uh, knock on Bruce Coslett's door and on uh, Rich Kotite's door, have her visit all these places, MetLife and Florham Park, and exercise all of it. Just put them all on the TV. And say, this house is clean. <laughs> That's, That's true. That's the one. I, That's I go it. back and forth between yeah. all of that. But, you know, listen, I'm a diehard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to always, you know, I mean, they could be like 1-15. in 15, Right. And in the last game, there's a 50-yard pass, and we're all, like, hopeful. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's the the curse of that's a death fan. That's the beauty of being a, yeah. a, a fan. You know, uh, and, you... and it's it's really uh, right. It's it's something that I, I really hope that they do clean house in some way mm -hmm. and start getting the pieces they need for that for that championship. Law, you want to ask David one last question before? Yeah, yeah uh, before, before we get, I mean, obviously, great career, many shows, Oz. We mentioned it earlier on Gotham. I got to ask about Rounders, though. Well, I mean, what was it like being on that set, that cast, that movie? You played, you know, you played the muscle there as well. In that movie, Rounders was fun because Rounders. It took a long time to shoot that scene where we're playing in that where all the uh, state police are playing. Yeah, yeah. It was like two weeks. I got to play poker every day for two weeks. Wow. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's where I learned how to play poker. You know, and it was like really a, a lot of fun. And um, it's one of my first gigs. I hadn't done, had too much, hadn't had too much experience as in movies at that at that point. Mm -hmm. And so it was. It was fun to watch these great, like Matt Damon and Ed Norton, and John the director Norvish. John Dahl uh, uh, directed a bunch of Dexter's later on in the. Oh, in the oh wow. And so it was. It was really great. It was fun to. Uh, good stuff. But if you notice, I'm not the. I'm the one trying to stop these guys from beating the hell out of those guys. You know? So I love it was. It, it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. At David Zayas 62, Annie in theaters now. Gotham on Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox. It's love. I, I love having you on, and I love having guests. Who call the word poker polka? I love it. It's back. It's like I feel like I'm back home. I <laughs> love it. it. It's good to see you, David. Good to see you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.